Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Now, let's just, let's just be assured that uh, there's lunch and bean pies after the, after the event. So there's going to be plenty of time, inshallah, for family reunion and for uh, fellowship and, and uh, taking photos. So we'll find our way. We'll begin in a few minutes, inshallah. We're, we're on Muslim time today. I, I, uh, I've, I've known that time in the Middle East. I've known that time in Pakistan. And it's right here in Chicago. Something about Muslims in time. I don't know what it is, but we're right on schedule. <laughs> MashaAllah. <laughs> Muslim standard time. That's right. <laughs> In the front row, where, where, else, where else could you be? Why don't you sit right next to this row there, inshallah. And we have four generations of the Hassan family with us here today, mashallah. That's, alhamdulillah. Okay, are we, uh, All right, salamu alaikum and happy Savior's Day. Yeah. This is a blessed uh, coinciding of the celebration of Dr. Shakila's birth a few years back in Hyderabad and the, the birthday of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So today is an auspicious day for us to be having this event, and we are here deliberately and purposefully and gratefully to be able to come together in, in this this place of learning, which would not have come into existence without the legacy of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his family and Imam Waruddin Muhammad, his son. And so we're very blessed to be here today. My name is Timothy Giannotti. I'm the current president and acting provost of the American Islamic College. And, uh, and as always, we will begin by remembering the one whose merciful decree has called us to be in this place at this moment. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In the name of God, who is the loving, merciful, the ever compassionate. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And all praise belongs to God, who is the Lord and the sustainer of all realities, of all the worlds. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad, and may God's blessings and salutations and peace be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad al-Mustafa, God's chosen and God's beloved. The one who was sent as Khatim al nabiyin the one who was sent to affirm and confirm, to verify and clarify what all the prophets before him brought and taught. And the one who was sent as nothing illa rahmatan lil alameen, as nothing but an embodiment of God's love and God's mercy to everyone and to everything. May God's blessings be upon him. May God's blessings and peace be upon his beloved family members who sacrificed everything, even their own lives, for the sake of this faith and for the sake of justice and standing for, for the oppressed and the vulnerable. And may God's peace and blessings be upon all of his righteous and true companions who similarly sacrificed everything so that one day we might inherit this religion and write our own chapter of Islamic history by God's grace and with God's help and blessings. May God's peace and blessings be upon all of the messengers, those whose names we know and those whose names we do not know, upon their families, upon their righteous and true companions, 
And today, as we hear news of war raging again in Palestine and other places in the world, we ask for God's peace to be upon the earth and to be with us as we embark upon this very blessed celebration and transitional moment. Mubarak. Steeped in the Quranic and biblical values of creational stewardship and justice, all of us here at the American Islamic College acknowledge that God has entrusted the lands and the waters to humankind who have been created to serve God and the creation as stewards or caretakers. We also uphold the Quranic teaching that we must stand for justice even when we ourselves are implicated. So we want to begin today by acknowledging that our campus sits on land that was originally entrusted to the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island. People whose sovereignty, culture, and very lives were violated by colonial policy. The same colonial policy that has enslaved, denigrated, oppressed, and persecuted our African American sisters and brothers for centuries. So here, just west of where the land meets the water, we recognize the historical land of the Council of the Three Fires, the confederated nations of the Ottawa, Chippewa, and Potawatomi nations. We acknowledge and we honor them, their land and their waterways and their descendants, whom we are blessed to count as our teachers, our students, our alumni, and our friends. Welcoming students of all faiths and backgrounds, the American Islamic College is a Chicago-based institution of higher learning. Grounded in Islamic values and steeped in Islam's rich and diverse intellectual and cultural traditions. We promote the appreciation, we promote an appreciation for the scope and richness of Islamic history and civilization in the classroom and beyond through impactful teaching and informative public events highlighting Islam's intellectual, artistic, and cultural expressions. We offer a Bachelor of Arts and a Master of Arts in Islamic Studies as well as a Master of Divinity in Islamic Studies and Muslim Chaplaincy. And God willing, we will very soon unveil new programs and new majors, including America's first Muslim School of Business. In addition, every summer we host a 10-week intensive Arabic Language Institute, which enables students to cover an entire year, that is two semesters of academic Arabic in just 10 weeks. Through rigorous scholarship and a commitment to social justice, this collective good, civic involvement, interfaith understanding, and intercultural engagement, AIC prepares students to become critical thinkers, visionary leaders, and responsible global citizens. Welcome to the American Islamic College. <clears throat> Today, as you know, we are blessed to celebrate and to honor two intertwined lives, two intertwined Chicago Muslim stories. And the point of intersection is this beautiful fez or, or cap that you see displayed on the stage today. So today we're going to hear some family reflections of the, uh, concerning the, the, these, these two intertwined lives we're going to hear a, the story of how the Fez was conceived and, and made. We're going, to, um, we're going to walk through this history and then we're going to, as the, as the Fez then transitions from Dr. Shakila's keeping to the safeguarding and the keeping of the Chicago Historical Museum, we're going to then gather for fellowship, for food, for bean pies, for coffee, for tea, and for conversation, inshallah. I just want to acknowledge today that we have many luminous souls uh, who are gathered with us. And uh, some of them will be on the program and, uh, and some of them are not on the program. But I just want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Ghulam Asi, who, who was one of the core faculty members who held the dream of AIC, this American Islamic College, together. In spite of all odds and in spite of all kinds of adversity, Dr. Asi was a guiding light and a, and a uh, consistent pillar of this college for many, many decades. And I just want to acknowledge you and, and thank you for coming, Sidi. Yes. I also want to acknowledge uh, one of my predecessors, Dr. Ali Yurtsever, 
one of our presidents who similarly was, was, was one of the, the core forces involved in the resuscitation of this dream and the revival of this dream back in the early uh, 2012, 2013, even before that, 2010, when they started renovating the building and reawakening this dream of the American Islamic College, which had become dormant. And, uh, and now, inshallah, you will live, inshallah, Dr. Ali, to see this become the great university that you envisioned and talked about all those years ago with God's help and blessings. And also, as I said earlier, we have four generations of the Hassan family who are with us. And so I just, I won't embarrass you and make you stand up, but, but uh, it's very exciting to see that this is, this is a family reunion. And it's a, it's a, th this interconnection, this intertwining of Chicago stories is really the story of two families. And, and obviously every family has its own drama and its own dynamics, but this is a day when those families are all together and those families are here in this place of learning, this place which would not have existed without the transformational work and life of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his family. And so it, it's with deep gratitude and with, uh, with great honor that I stand here and serve as the MC today. So our first speaker uh, is, uh, has fallen ill, that is the, the, um, the president and CEO of the Chicago Historical Museum. But we have two, uh, two other officials from the Chicago Historical Museum that will be joining us. And the first of those is Dr. Peter Alter, who is the Gary T. Johnson Chief Historian and Director of the Studs Terkel Center for Oral History at the Chicago Historic History Museum. And so, Dr. Peter. Hi, good morning everyone. I'm so honored and humbled to be here in front of you all. Uh, of course, Dr. Shakila, our honored guest uh, here in, to commemorate, honor, and document two intertwined stories that took place in Dr. Shakila's beloved Chicago. Uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, uh, our president and CEO, uh, Donald Lassier, could not be here. Uh, he came down with uh, the cold that many people have right now. Uh, he definitely sends his uh, regrets, uh, but unfortunately could not make it today. Uh, his previous job actually was uh, the president of the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky. So uh, this, uh, these intertwined stories that we're talking about today are very important to him. And we look forward to uh, expanding conversations, including our president, Donald Lassier, who is a native Chicagoan, uh, moving forward as we continue to collaborate with AIC. Uh, yes, I am the uh, chief historian and director of the Oral History Center at the Chicago History Museum. Through that Oral History Center, we do collaborative community-based oral history projects using tools of history and oral history for goals of social justice. Uh, there are several of you here who either were interviewers for us or were interviewed uh, by us for our um, project, the Chicago Muslim Oral History Project that lasted about five years and resulted in our exhibition, American Medina, Stories of Muslim Chicago. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, uh, the run of that exhibition was uh, greatly cut short, uh, but um, uh, I am, again, humbled and honored to be here today. Uh, many of you know Dr. Shakila and her reference to the relevance of chance encounters. Uh, so um, really, the rest of my remarks are just uh, comments that I've taken from Dr. Shakila over the five years that I've uh, um, had the honor to know her and develop a friendship with her. And of course, explore uh, inter and intra-community dynamics and relationships that unite us. Uh, we're very pleased, of course, to be uh, the Chicago History Museum and the repository for this starry crown, uh, another starry crown, two uh, uh, prototypes and other materials documenting uh, the intertwi intertwined stories of Dr. Shakila, uh, as well as her husband, Dr. Zia, and of course, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Sister Clara Muhammad. And in Dr. Shakila's words, how a starry crown came to sit on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's head. Uh, and I am very much looking forward to this continuing journey with Dr. Shakila, and of course, Dr. Timothy and the American Islamic College 
for a long-lasting collaborative relationship. Uh, we're hoping for uh, future internships uh, with students uh, from AIC coming not, not too far south to the uh, um, Chicago History Museum uh, and also some other activities. Uh, and just for those of you who don't know us, uh, we are at 1601 North Clark Street, the Chicago History Museum, also known as the Chicago Historical Society. Uh, we were founded in 1856. We moved to our location at Clark Street and North Avenue in the 1930s. Uh, and I've been uh, there not since the 1930s, but since 1999. <laughs> uh, and so I'm, I'm very pleased and honored to be here. Uh, so I'm concluding my remarks because really we want to leave the stage for our other luminaries, but I am going to introduce my uh, close colleague and friend, uh, Rebecca Kaufman, uh, who has been at the museum for about a year and a half. She is the museum's curator of religion and community history. And when I got very much involved uh, in another project, uh, uh, Rebecca was able to really uh, pick up the torch and carry forward this program from the perspective of the Chicago History Museum. So I look forward to communing with you all over food and pie later on, and thank you mu very much for having us today. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Peter said, my name is Rebecca Kaufman, and I am the Curator of Religion and Community History. I often get asked what those words mean, and I say, anything you want them to, because that's often how the conversation <laughs> starts. Um, those two words can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, and it is my honor and privilege to get to define them with community. And so I'm really grateful to be in this space with you, to share this time with you. Um, Dr. Shakila's a force to be reckoned with, and that is why I'm on this stage. Um, when asked, you know, what a religion and community historian means, uh, you know, the museum has a definition that they had when they invited me to take the role, and so we have an initiative we call Chicago Sacred. And Chicago Sacred is really a conversation around these stories. You know, Chicago as a place of sacred value, where religion, community, and so many other things intertwine, and that's absolutely integral to our history as a city. And so for that, you know, a curator is really a facilitator. We're a co-steward, and it's our job to help these stories come together in a space. And so I have the honor and privilege of thinking of the museum as an interfaith space, as a space for encounter. And so Dr. Shakila, the two words I always think of when I speak with you, encounter and energy, and how we put those things into action. And so um, I think this event is an amazing opportunity to get to do that. And so, um, I have many thoughts and many words, but I look forward to sharing them with you afterward at lunch uh, so that we can continue on with our program. But thank you again for the honor of being in this space with you, for sharing this time together. So with that, I'm gonna pass to Dr. Timothy for our next luminary. So thank you again. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Peter and Rebecca. Your, your efforts and your sensitivity and your um, reverence for the process and for this artifact, which really, I think, qualifies as an American relic, uh, I think that that has been so deeply appreciated by all of us. And so I just want to say that we, um, we are inspired by our ability to trust that this object will be treated with the reverence and the respect and the protective safeguarding that it, that it deserves. So thank you so much. It's now my <clears throat> honor and privilege to introduce Imam Sultan Rahman Muhammad, uh, who is uh, obviously a, is a friend of AIC, and I'm, I'm glad and honored and privileged to, to be able to say that he's a brother and a friend. And we are honored to have him with us we're honored to have his family with us. We are honored uh, by all of the members of the Honorable Elijah's family who have made an effort and traveled from other parts of the United States to come here today and to be part of this celebration. And so this in many ways, like our previous uh, event last year with Imam uh, honoring the life and legacy of Imam Walid bin Muhammad, this is now a 
this is not just an event, but it's a family reunion on so many levels and in so many ways. And so we're honored and privileged to have Imam Sultan with us. Imam Sultan has served as the Arabic and Islamic Civilizations Instructor of Muhammad University of Islam in Chicago since 2008, and has worked with multiple Muslim rights and social change institutions across the city of Chicago. He was appointed to his post as the first national Imam of the Nation of Islam by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in 2012, and resident Imam of Masjid Maryam, the Mosque of Maryam, the, the Masjid Maryam National Center. Imam Muhammad was later installed by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as a member of the Shura Executive Council, the national governing body of the Nation of Islam, under the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who could not be with us today. But we're so privileged and honored to have you with us, Imam Sultan. So please, Imam Sultan. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله وصلاة وسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Dear brothers, dear sisters, dear family, we greet you with the greetings of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. It's a humbling opportunity, a blessing, and a mercy to come among family and our diverse community to today honor the legacy of our dear sister, uh, sister Dr. Shakila Hassan, with her husband, brother Dr. Zia Hassan. May Allah be pleased with him. This event, entitled Starry Crown, a Chicago Muslim story, is, in my estimation, a beautiful tapestry that is represented by everyone in this audience today. This institution of the American Islamic College is a house of learning, a house of education that is designed, designed to lift up these kinds of stories that represent the truth of the oneness of our community. We all may have differences, but Allah Most High in the Qur Holy Quran has established that he is the one that makes all of our differences a mercy, a mercy in that he will settle all differences. So we don't have to worry about settling any differences ourselves. Allah Most High will work it out for us. Allahu Akbar, praise be to Allah, God is great. So we honor the strident work of our dear sister who is our auntie, our auntie in the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So this is a warm event. Yes, it's formal, but it is a blessing to have our families together in representation as we are today. So this morning, I am blessed with the opportunity and the privilege to bring words on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who was unable to accept the invitation today, but has delivered words and wanted me to let all know that he is not here physically, but he is here in spirit. He has been one that has had the vision that put him on the mission and work of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of transformation of the human heart and the establishment in the way of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, 
based on his teachings, he rebuilt the nation of Islam as a testimony to the proof of its efficacy, the proof of its ability for transformative power among those who have been lost, that have been oppressed, and have been erased of their self-identity. He was trusted as the national representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, entrusted to deliver and continue the message that he, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, established. And he did not fail to do that, but he did that with much sacrifice and is doing that with much sacrifice today. As we begin, I would first like to share a table talk from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about the Fez that we found in hundreds of hours of recordings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who described this Fez first by taunting, <laughs> taunting the members of the family and laborers and staff at the table to answer a question. He said, tell me about this fez that sits on my head. One of the ministers stated, well, dear apostle, there are certain number of stars. One is green, one is red, and he began to talk about the color of the fez. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad interjected. He said, no, it was nothing like a scientist that made this fez, but I reached up into the heavens with my little hands and pulled down the sun, moon, and stars and place them on my head to accept the job that no one else was doing. These words are pregnant and very profound in their meaning for we as a people had no one that had come to us to extend the hand of the goodly servant of one who would help us out in the direction of our return to self-knowledge and faith, that good Samaritan. We begin the words now of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He writes, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I met Dr. Shakila and Dr. Zia Hassan through the beneficence and the mercy of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I knew of them and met them in his home at 4847 South Woodlawn only a few occasions on only a few occasions between 1955 and 1975, 25 years. But I knew of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's great, great love and respect for Dr. Zia Hassan and his wife, Dr. Shakila. After the departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I was told that Dr. Shakila designed the fez that I saw the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wear at his home and in many occasions, if not most occasions, of his speeches. She designed it and he certainly made it famous. The picture that strikes me is the cartoon in the magazine, 
I believe it is Esquire magazine, with the leader de Gaulle pointing at him. And he's the only black leader among the men, among the powerful men that were being addressed. And there you found the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wearing his fez. In the words that were put in the mouth in the cartoon of this representation was this one here will cause us much trouble. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I come today to honor the feds, but I came to honor the truth that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad loved so much. I want to say thank you to Dr. Zia and Dr. Shakila Hassan for the love that they shared with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his family and the kindness, the kindness of the two of them and the love Elijah Muhammad represented of them to persons like me. And I wanted to thank, thank them knowing the critical relationship and the minister and certain members of the Jewish community that she helped to facilitate in building and mending fences. She, she, she used her good offices and the beauty of her home and the magnificence of her cooking to a common table, hoping that that would lead to a thawing of the ice between the minister, the Nation of Islam, under his leadership, and members of the Jewish community. I will always remember her and her husband with fondness and with love in the way she related to Elijah Muhammad and his family. And they became as family. He treated them as a son and a daughter until families became families, until his family became their family, and their family became his family. So as an onlooker, he taught me of them and his love and deep respect for them. The good work she has done to make peace between believers, to get understanding between believers and disbelievers will make her greatly remembered long after we and she have returned to Allah. These efforts of Dr. Zia and Dr. Shakila Hassan are efforts that have sown the seeds, efforts that have sown the seeds that will germinate and ultimately produce what she wanted to see, the unity of the Muslim Ummah and the respect for the name of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the great work that he did in bringing the light of knowledge and civilization of a people that had lost the knowledge of themselves and manifested behavior that made us outcasts among civilized peoples. He did a great work and we are continuing that work today. We thank the leadership and members of the American Islamic College for hosting this event to honor Dr. Shakila Hassan and to honor the relationship between her and her husband and the Muhammad family and the nation of Islam. We pray that these steps toward unity will continue, will continue to be strengthened for the glory of Allah and the success 
of the Muslim Ummah in America and the revival of Islam throughout the world. Allahu Akbar. Our minister concludes on these statements. He states Satan's challenge to Allah that he would make all, all of us deviate. He would come right in our straight path and make us all to deviate. But Allah answered and said, you will get all except my purified ones. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan then quotes the verse stating, it is Satan that said, my Lord, as thou hast judged me erring, I shall certainly make evil fair seeming. Fair seeming to them on earth and I shall cause them all to deviate, except thy servants from among them, the purified ones. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan concludes saying it is our prayer. It is our prayer for the purification of our hearts that we won't be caught in the snare of Satan against the Muslim Ummah. Allah said, yes, you'll get all except my purified ones. Our prayer is that we will be blessed to be those among who hearts, whose hearts have been purified by Allah himself. Our hearts will be purified by him and our differences will fall to the side. He is the judge. May Allah bless us to stay in his path and be of the purified ones. He sends greetings to the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad from my wife, Sister Khadija, Farrakhan, my family, and the members of the Nation of Islam. Thank you for listening to these words that we have delivered from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much, Brother Imam Sultan. And thank you to Minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who could not be with us, but who so graciously composed those words, those voluminous, beautiful words and prayers to be shared. And now we're coming to the woman of the hour, Dr. Shakila Hassan. A University of Chicago professor emeritus of anesthesia. I'm sorry? Oh, you're going to introduce her? OK, OK, very good. Assalamu alaikum, sister. I see you don't need my body. Oh, yeah. Assalamu alaikum. With, with God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, all praises are due to Allah, the Lord of all the world. We thank him for all that we have and in all that we have been granted and all that we have been anointed with by his will. This is a very precious time for us it's precious because something very unique has happened in the universe. And I'm gonna keep it short, as Auntie said I should. But I wanna say, from my own observation, 
my first impression as a five-year-old little girl meeting her has not changed. Thank you. And when I saw her and her husband, Dr. Zia, I saw two friendly faces. But because I was only two, and because I was only five, I didn't know why they looked so different. That was my first attraction. Now, the next thing is, the kindness I saw on their faces was so unique and it never changed. So I would like to say that Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, most glorified is God, meant for something very unique to happen on this side of the earth in this hemisphere called North America. We had many, many people who didn't understand the purpose of the downtrodden people here called African Americans. And I'm saying this as quick as I can. <laughs> they understood it without even having to even be spoken of. It was something unspoken, unnecessary to speak on. Their understanding is something that I believe Allah made happen. Dr. Shaquille and her husband came in with I would call, uh, I'm trying to get the words right, where you have no distinction between one human and another as being someone that should come together. So like any other new thing, it gets fought against. She and her husband came with a heart that was pure and they saw a need to bring the love of the religion together regardless of race. And you know, America is you know, sick with that one. They brought the cure, and they came, and they supported. Dr. Shaquille and her husband were welcomed into the house of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the family. They're uh, lovingly known as uncle and auntie to us grandchildren, who now are grandparents. The last part I want to say is this. There was something very special about Dr. Shaquille, and when she listened to my grandfather, uh, speaking about something that he needed, and he made a gesture. She'll tell you about it. What he was saying is something that a lot of us don't recognize, even in our own development as human beings. There is a point where the flesh is less than, and you start to spiritually ascend. She recognized it. She addressed it. Done. And she'll tell you all of the rest of that magical, excellent story. I welcome you and greet the most honorable auntie, Shaquille Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Masu, we're looking for that handheld mic. I just want to, <clears throat> I just want to say, uh, Sister Halima, you deserved yourself to be introduced in this way, and so I just want to, I just want to acknowledge that we have uh, one of the descendants of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with us. My understanding is that you are the the granddaughter of Elijah Muhammad, and the and yes, that's right, and uh, and um, and we're just so honored, and we know that you are a family historian, and that you've that you're, you're very engaged with this legacy and we're just so honored to have you with us as well and your son, Khalil. So we'll be hearing from Brother Khalil a little bit later, but, uh, but now I think none of us need a, a full academic proper introduction. I think we all know Dr. Shakila and she, uh, her presence and her wisdom speak for themselves. So Dr. Shakila Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. I am so excited, humbled. I don't know, lots of emotions are coming up. And Dr. Timothy, you know how that goes, right, with my speech. So I would like to thank each one of you, and I'll come to that point. But let me start. This story makes sense. It has happened. I'll take you through that journey. But before I let uh, uh, 
Sister Halima go and sit down. She is one of the pusher uppers of this element to come it alive. I so called made the hat, never talked about it for many years, and didn't think about writing a book. But here it is. And Sister Halima, I give her the recognition. I apologize. You know, I'm supposed to be 90, so I better behave 90, right? <laughs> <laughs> then I will, I will make more sense to each one of you, because some of you have kindly asked, are you still working? <laughs> so anyway, I won't get there. Uh, I'm here, and I'm honored and humbled, and let, let me go back to the scriptures that I was beginning to honor Sister uh, Halima. She called me and asked me to, she asked me to uh, consider writing a book. And I'll fast forward it because there are lots of beautiful moments to share with you. And here is the book that happened to us. She came and stayed on it with her stay with me and we talked we recorded we did a lot of things not that we paid attention to all of that I, it got beaten uh, somehow by me the way my, my side and I cannot forget watch out somebody who is going to get a shout out for me and I somehow interconnected with the family and decided I was going to do it on Amazon. What did I know about publishing and that too on Amazon? Because I couldn't go to any publisher. I didn't know where to go to. Is it religion? It is this. It definitely was not anesthesiology and medicine that somebody could help me and understand I could write this book. So we took the steps and God made it easy. And uh, Sultan here, Sult Imam Sultan, they were visiting me in something, and uh, he just casually mentioned. I, I said, I w I'm looking for a student to just sit with me. And he said, how about my son? So I didn't take it seriously, but anyway. When the son arrived, rest is history. And he and I sat, I will fast forward to the push button arrangement, and he sat with me, and we were pushing the button. I did all the processing, but I wasn't expert enough, not even having done one or thought about it. Sultan, show up. Come here. <laughs> and, and he sat next to me uh, near my desk. And what did I say? You were much younger then. Yes, ma'am. And so I said, look, I, I'm pushing the button or whatever I'm doing. Could you please come? I cannot believe that you are the great grandson of Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and you're sitting here with me, and you're going to push the button? Wait, <laughs> let me add your line in the acknowledgement. So this is the process here is going on. How informal, how uniquely unique. So I write a couple of lines to acknowledge him, and he said, ma'am, stop right, I'll never forget that emotion. And he, he uh, actually, he physically, he, he did like that. And I'm looking at him, what, are you, what is he saying? And he said, ma'am, do you know? And he picked out the picture, and there were a set of those pictures there, so much. <laughs> so he showed the picture, and he said, this little girl who grew up wearing this hat and now she's sitting here, and I'm sitting with her to have made the hat for my great-grandfather. I cannot forget it. It was such an emotional thing, I cannot give it description or expression to feel the impact of it. And now today I have in the audience a great-grandchild myself. Harris is here, and another one is waiting at home for, for a little buddy of hers c c coming soon. And it is historic for me. 
It is, let me stop, otherwise I'll write a poem. <laughs> and uh, you're saying, yeah. go back and just see. Uh, you, you will see the picture on the... <laughs> and uh, now, le let me come to uh, Halima when she came for the interviews, so-called. She said, what do you remember when you came to the house for the first time? I said, what an interview technique. Why is she asking me that question? What does she have to do? How is she imagining? Anyway, so she said, who all did you see in the house? I said, Zia and I, whom I didn't know who he was, you know, I just met him. And uh, uh, we both entered the door, and the door was open, and the doors were so wide open, and I saw two people standing for in welcome, uh, sister, uh, as I call them, uh, all my life, uh, brother Elata and sister Clara, and they had their arms open as much as smile from cheek to cheek. And all they said is, assalamu alaikum sister, assalamu alaikum brother. And what did they, what did we say? Wa alaikum salam. So I didn't have to define where I was, how I was, who they were, or ask questions. Muslim, non-Muslim, A, B, C, D, I don't want to waste my energy on that because I don't believe that kind of orientation in my relationships. So, but it was just comfort. And they embraced, sister gave me hugs and kisses on my cheeks and never let my hands go, took me inside. And that's where I met the bean soup. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, you can, my daughters, Rubina and Isra and Aisha, she's not here, she's in Paris. They all know, and their families, Wakar is here, and, they, uh, and the kids. Every year they ask me, especially in winter, they want the bean soup because they have it on a weekend lunch or something. And uh, that bean soup and all of these have memories, but nothing like uh, Elijah Mohammed's cat. And I tell you, for some reason, I never sat and wondered and thought, I did this, I did that. And several years later, several of you have asked me, especially uh, Elijah, who I miss today, Sonny, he's not here, uh, uh, Herbert's uh, brother, Javed's um, son, oldest son, and Alif's brother. And he, uh, he uh, always asked me, uh, out of context, he'd just come to me and say, Dr. Shakira, how come you didn't tell us that, that you made that fess? So I said, well, I wouldn't answer that question, but I will ask you with one. How come you never uh, thought about how grandpa got that fess on his head? Where did it come from? Through this thing, that thing, I had some anecdotes with him. And I said, it didn't come in a plane. It didn't drop from the sky. And now Brother Sultan has brought up all those elements and Brother always, so many times, he used the word starry crown. And we, I have had conversations, especially with Halima and others, and I decided to name the book like that. And I also just like to mention for the audience who may not know that uh, Honorable Raja Muhammad's dad was a Baptist minister. And that kind of connection, uh, what it has to do with anything, except these are happenstance we, which we do not have any control of, and they have been existence, you know. So I, I cannot help and compliment uh, uh, Dr. Timothy, because amazingly, he picked up the word encounter and uh, established this institute, Hassan Institute, and go and read that better than I can tell you. And I can think of no better encounter than mine, life in general. Can we uh, go through the PowerPoint so I can expedite that matter to come to the point here? Of actually, the actual making of the fest. Okay. 
uh, show that girl. This is the girl that I met in the, in the house as I was answering the question of Sister Halima, uh, who I saw. I said I saw the, a little girl with her back to the wall in the foyer, right, and the, at the entrance. So she said, I can't remember, I'm paraphrasing. She said, that was me. So I said, yeah, I was just describing to you that how I saw a little girl with in awe and with her eyes, big eyes, beautiful eyes there. So she said, that was me. I was five, six years old. And, uh, and did you see my cousin coming to uh, tap me on the shoulder? And she was 13. I said, what, that was Sharon. Oh my God, how do you know? I said, uh, you, uh, you were the four or five uh, uh, kids that were kind of in this age group that I hung around with so many times. So I loved it. So I, and she said, my, you know what my cousin was telling me? And she loved to animate, and she says it so much beautiful than I can tell you. She said, my cousin looked at me and said to me, Halima, cousin, no, she addressed her as cousin, watch out, you are staring, that's bad manners. <laughs> you know, because she was, she was uh, in awe. So all these things tell me that Halima, how she became family historian, okay? And because she remembers all kinds of things and we, she always authenticates the stories by asking me what I was thinking. And all, all these things bring me to wonder how this girl, I asked myself, this girl who was wo wearing that hat, which Sultan Siddiq already attested to that, and so did Halima. And actually it was Halima who did the first because I had some of my uh, childhood pictures, lots of them. Uh, I, I, I don't think there are too many 90-year-olds like me who have so many pictures as I have because my father was just was obsessed with his camera. And so uh, she, she, she spotted that picture. And I think I was probably secretly hiding it, like what kind of odd picture is this? What am I wearing here? And she, uh, she said, that's you, that's you. And you were wearing that hat and growing up to be, and she had said the exact things that was baffling to me, that two family members, different generations, said the same thing, that I was growing up, wearing that hat, somebody put the hat on me, my father, mother, and I was going to design one like that. And there, there is some pattern there, I never looked at that. You see, you, you look, look, look at it carefully. And Halima, was steadfast in her friendship, like m m m all of your uh, cousins and everybody whom I have known and had the privilege to. So when I was asking that question, I go to, uh, could you please? Can you help me? How did I come here? How did this happen? In 90, okay. Go there and then go here. Now, you look at this. One is my graduation from medical school. Can I believe, uh, do you believe that I still have these pictures? I don't know where I had them, but I have them. Uh, thanks to my husband's brilliant, methodic savings. And the other one is right after I arrived in Chicago. Okay, go to this. And this, this fascinates me. I traveled in this fancy boat, I call it, excuse my language, but it is, I didn't know there is such a thing as a oceanic liner, etc. till that was, thing was celebrated two years later that retired, and it's a Ile de France. It's historic, even two years ago, I have bought a book to put it in the institute, so, so that I can chuckle over it. And I traveled to Chicago, and I came in the boat, I mean in the ship rather, excuse me, 
And I didn't know where I was traveling, what class I traveled, but I am here via Greyhound bus. I have to get that commercial in. And uh, when they were trying to sell me tickets to fly or this and that, I said, I'd like to go by the bus. So he was baffled with my English speaking and was very sympathetic because I was just too young, naive looking, etc. And he said, uh, we don't recommend that. It is Al Capone town and this and that and that all kind of Chicago history was coming out there. And I said, let's, uh, I don't know exactly, but I, I just said, take the Greyhound bus, leave the driving to us. And he, he looked at me and he said, did you say that? I said, yes. And I have looked up uh, ever since that the commercial was just invented. How did I hear it on radio? Don't ask me. It was up to my father to create all these kind of things. So anyway, I'm here. And in uh, July 1st, 1956 was a Sunday. I show up in Northwestern's hospitals ward that I was, it was called, and I was posted. And I was greeted by the professor, uh, Martin Seifert, a historic um, fact uh, in Chicago history that he was the most celebrated um, uh, physician in his field. Anyway, he it greeted me, etc., and he told me that uh, it's polio epidemic for the relevance of our times, I mentioned that. So I was the intern in that ward and 24-7 service. I won't, I won't dwell there, but I was happy that I was there for one month. So I was the three days later in another service. People didn't know me in the hospital, and I was one of the two females in the group of 40-plus people there in training. I got a call at 8.30 at night come down to the surgeon's lounge right away, it's an emergency. What could be the emergency? As an anesthesiologist, I know that you might be facing a cardiac arrest or something, but at that time, I couldn't figure. I got there, knocked on the door, and they uh, opened the door, dark, all of a sudden the lights went on, and the 40, healthy, hearty, <laughs> everybody screamed, tequila! <laughs> and, do you think I was shocked? No, I was surprised that they could rhyme something with my name. <laughs> I mean, uh, that has set stones of learning to experience one another. How you react to how you are treated is partly in our control to finish it. Take charge, just like Honorable Elijah Muhammad I loved his philosophy. I didn't know all the wisdom. I'm saying it because I'm 90 here now, okay? So I've seen it in action. And he'll always say, blame them. He will call them, um, I mean, it's a devil, devil. I heard, I never heard that word in my vocabulary. And I thought to myself, what's that? So I will ask him, um, brother, do we have to call people devil because they are not nice to us? <laughs> and my husband, uh, I mean, God bless him, he was key in anything uh, ever I said or did in my life. But he said, he, he would just look, look up from the table and, I, and brother will catch it. He was extremely sharp and he'll say, it's okay, let her ask, because he used to get restless if I didn't ask questions. So I, uh, when, when he said that, he said, and why I'm mentioning that is, his spirit of unanimity and elimination of our acceptance of diversity, not to change the whole thing in color, creed, practice, humanity, accepting the best in yourself, taking charge, you know, and self-respect, self-reliance, all these words meant a lot to me. And to see uh, so much of your, the family members here, it's nothing but joy and pride for me. I think he's smiling. And uh, let's go through some of this. And as you see, the picture 
of the Hassan brothers with Elijah Muhammad right after they arrived in America. And that was in 1955 when the doctor brother of my husband, who was here for a year, went back to Pakistan and returned uh, and ha was going back to Pakistan for his older brother's wedding. And I had to fast forward to include that little portion to, to historically uh, make the sense here. Yeah. So he, when he came back, the next day they came to see, um, to the house, 4847 Woodlot. See, I remember the address even. So, and, and they took the picture. And there I met a brother's mom, uh, Mother Marie. I'll never forget her because every time I went there, she had her, my hand in her hand and she'll just smile. Very elegant lady. And there is the, uh, sister uh, Annie, uh, brother's uh, sister. And uh, Gail is here, her granddaughter. So I want to mention to you that she was another beautiful soul. And Sister Murray died in 1958, uh, two years after I was there. So I, I, I know them. And they, they would have loved the, the hat themselves if they saw it. That how you did it, you made it. <laughs> you know, because she, they were great friends of mine, as if they were my grandmothers. And uh, this is Marshall Fields. Okay, this is interesting. I think this, this thing you got to know, exactly how this happened. And how encounters come at you with an opportunity. And you don't even know which is which and where it is going. And why it is happening, no rationale. So I'm sitting with sister and uh, my husband and uh, on the right, we had a signed seat. So they both are talking and I uh, heard my brother Elijah say something. I heard about the suit and the color of the suit, what to wear in the daytime, etc. I didn't know exactly what was going on. And he took out some red floppy hat and he put it on the table and he said, I think I don't like this thing or something like that. So I said, I raised my hand and I said, first of all, it's not fast and I gave my talk, please read my book. It's very, very interesting. It's baffling for even myself. So when he, when he did, when he did hear all this lecture on what is fares and why it is not fares, and what is dinner cap and all this, and by the way, my uh, my uh, in-laws, my father-in-law had bought them the dinner caps in Lahore, uh, and uh, it's all information is there. And to honorable uh, concert general, thank you for your presence. And I just want to say two words in celebration of Lahore. I am an honorary Lahorean <laughs> and a Pakistani, hold the passport, had the passport, etc., because I was married to a citizen. And I thank Pakistan always for that, for that dignity to allow me to feel. And my energy is my own. How I feel I am a Pakistani is my own personal uh, Step for it. That's why I really, really appreciate your presence. Chicago and Lahore, for all your information, are the sister cities. And historically, we are baffled with beautiful Chicago, and Lahore is known to be one of the most profoundly beautiful cities in the world. I mean, to me, it's my world. And uh, so, uh, so I tell you that that uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his sons went there in December uh, of 1959 before this hat or fest ever was conceived or came about. And when they were there, my in-laws, uh, Mia Izharul Hassan and his wife, Blyde Begum, my uh, dearest uh, loving uh, in-laws, they had them over for the dinner on two Christian Road, uh, two Heron Road in Krishnanagar, in their Koti, and they sent my youngest brother-in-law, uh, Iftahar, who still rejoices as a teenager, took them to this Rampuri hat place and got them the dinner um, caps for all. And I have picture in the book, you can see it. 
and so the relevance of Fez and Dina Cap is coming, and Honorable Elijah Muhammad knew this, but he wasn't considering to wear that on his podium. So when we were sitting at the table, when I brought up that, he said, what are you thinking, sister? Just imagine somebody, a naive kid sitting at the table, and a leader of the, of the nation of Islam, or whosoever in whatever status he was, to think about what she has to say about the hat. So she, when he asked me, I said, I think, I didn't know what I was saying and describing, so I decided to ask a uh, sister. I said, sister, may I have a piece of paper or something? So she knew I needed more than a piece of paper, so she brought me a pad of paper and pencil, and I sketched it. The sketch is in the book, you can see. And brother looked at that, and his smiling habit was like this, always chuckling, always chuckling. So he, he held his finger like that, and he said, <laughs> what are you saying? What is this? So I said, uh, this is the fez that I am suggesting, and I call it cap, and you call it fez, so, but it's okay. So he said, what is this? I said, this is a crescent and star. And you know, Pakistan flag is green, and Turkish flag is red, and we have the flag there. there. And that's my reference to call it Islamic symbol. So you are going to be, the, you are the leader, not going to be, he was. he was. I said, you are the leader of nation of Islam. So that means you're an Islamic leader, so this is it. And I'm not trying to make him, define him, or talk about religion or anything, but it is just my spontaneous that happened. And he, he looked at that, he said, oh, that sounds good, but what are all these little things? So, because that <laughs> I had some little sketch. So I, I, I had nothing else to say, but yeah, oh, those are kind of Islamic arts and embellishments that make it pretty. We have it on the Quran, we have it on this, that, but, and I went on. So he was, he was really stunned, but I, in retrospect, I get goosebumps thinking how this uh, Fez became the symbol of evolution to his leadership, to his distinction, and his identity. I have seen him in person. We were privileged to be around, not sitting in the meeting or something, uh, with when he had pictures in the print, uh, go to him. You see, uh, this is the collection that I have given to the museum. It has the, uh, the this, this particular one that you have seen on the stage is one of the original three that I got made. And that is going in there. Somehow it is in brilliant condition and it has been with me and Brother Aleph has taken it three, four year, years to Detroit and other places for exhibition. It has been in exhibition in after Malcolm program in Atlanta, et cetera, okay? And there are uh, others that are unmade. So I had always, always bought some fabric, sent some design, or you know that the experts uh, embellish it in a little bit different ways, you know, that's, all I can say, do it like this. And so I, I still have three. And every so often, brother would call and uh, ask Zia to talk, give the phone to me. And so I'll take the phone. At that time, we didn't have cell phone. Everybody didn't have a phone to pick up. So I, I will answer, and I say, Asalaamu Alaikum, brother. Wa Alaikum Salaam. And he'll start laughing. That was his communication with me. So uh, you know, you know, so I said, uh, you need, do you need a fez? <laughs> so he said, yes. And that was a short conversation. And I said, it's coming. And so that's how the fez exists there. And this picture I just put for the relevance that how it has been there in any kind of historic picture, it is part of his wardrobe. And keep going, and these pictures uh, Re Rebecca has uh, put together, and, uh, I have several in the book myself, but these are all recorded at the year they were done. 
And the first one was worn in 1961 um, at the amphitheater in the, one of the first large gatherings of the Savior's Day. Okay, this, this is the picture of Halima. Halima, do you recognize yourself? <laughs> and that's me that you spotted in my picture collection and brought me to bear the fact that that hat I really wore. I can't deny that that peculiar thing. I don't know who put it there, you know. Okay. Well, I have to tell you, I wondered who I am, why I am, I am here, and how I make sense. And something comes to mind because it, there, since I have been uh, living at, uh, at the building I live in, and I have the privilege to, to look at the sky, no matter which room I am, whether I'm sleeping or dining or cooking, uh, I have wondered about sky, water, and humanity, unity, diversity, community, and these fascinating things have brought me to think. I could be a human here. I could be one of the millions, billions that existed, or I could be a drop in the ocean. And that's fascinating. Why, why, you, why you think you are a drop in the ocean and you mean nothing? Oh, uh, people say, oh, I, who am I? My opinion doesn't count, I'm gone. My vote doesn't mean I don't want to be part of this. But the energy is with the one. God is one, encompasses everything that ever you can imagine God has done it. Why we have 99 attributes of God? Why? Because 100 minus one. How, uh, God is unity, God is beauty, God is complete, God is everything. And we are still struggling, that's why we're human beings. So accept we do errors, accept that you have a duty to, to mend them, and that is the called business of life. You know, like, and that is the prophetic tradition, that you get up, you live, you do your best, and at night you pray you, in gratitude and you wonder well, how you can correct your mistakes. That is the human journey. So it brings to so many, so many things. And after all, what is kun for your kun? Create. God willed it. It is. It is. It is, it says. And I'm fascinated with these two facts and that correct us as humans, as life, as circle, and I always used to amuse myself. You keep going east, people will say, I'm very bad in directions. Everybody, all of you know, uh, I can take you elsewhere if I'm going somewhere. <laughs> and and uh, so uh, I think uh, it, is, it is my honor and my privilege. I cannot tell you how humbled I am to see so many of you. Uh, my good, goodness. Maria, thank you. And may I say something? <laughs> Maria is my, uh, what should I say, uh, one of the closest members of uh, the, uh, uh, Honorable Elijah's family. Uh, nobody less or more, okay, Sultan, don't worry about it. <laughs> but, Sult <laughs> but I have known him for a long time, and Sultan, has been the CBS champion of the, oh my goodness, don't even ask me. You want to know anything about anything about all that and documentary work with Bill Curtis, with uh, traveling with Minister Farah Khan, et cetera, for 30 years he worked there. And, he, and he uh, has been uh, a, a great uh, support in my work and my, my conversations and so on. And, and Zia and I have loved having him as a neighbor and friend. And uh, his wife, Maria, I don't want to say too many things except that he, she is the daughter of Minister Farah Khan. Do you see how intertwined we are? 
I mean, she's the daughter of Minister Farah Khan, grand, grand, and, uh, you, you, you know, and Alif is the grandson of Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They lived right on the premise, 4847 Woodlawn, and I've seen him grow up, marry Maria, have his family, and I know his grandchildren, and so on. This is an honor and privilege. This is not to praise myself or say something, but all of us in life are on a journey of one encounter or the other, and this is why it makes sense. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Chibadi, that, that Hassan Institute, I'm not doing advertisement or, or something, but I'm saying that there is a discipline that needed to evolve consciously uh, and not inadvertently pushed in the compartments that something, and openly to know one another. It is your strength. I, 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 whatever you call it, I, it, it doesn't mean if you're 90 or 100 or 200 that you stop talking or something, it's God's will how you get going. But I think the energy I get is because of knowing you, 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 all of you, all of you, and anywhere you are, virtually, physically, how I have been privileged to know you. And have the patience to know that nobody is wrong, they are all right, but how do we make it right together? Okay, I think I should stop. So we, we have a few more people to hear from. Thank you so much, Dr. Shakila, but I think it would, I'd like to keep you here for the remainder of the program, if that's okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Yes, and, um, and now uh, Dr. Jalila Muhammad Dukes is, uh, is here, fresh back from the Middle East, is here to, uh, to share uh, some remarks with us again. So I'm still learning, and so uh, whenever I have questions about the family tree of Elijah Muhammad, I always ask Dr. Shakila, because she has it all memorized. But my understanding is that Dr. Jalila is the youngest child of the oldest child of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Brother Emmanuel, if that's correct. And, uh, and she's come all the way uh, to, uh, to share some remarks with us. And then we, um, we have just a few more remarks, and then we'll be able to, uh, to um, stand and watch the, watch the Fez as it, as it makes its journey to its new home. And then we'll have time for food and fellowship and bean pie, inshallah. So Dr. Jalila. So being uh, assalamu alaikum family and friends. Wa alaikum assalam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, being the youngest uh, daughter, a child of the eldest uh, child of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I've gotten older and I need glasses. So. <laughs> <laughs> My cousin still thinks of me as a baby, but I am older. Um, I bring you greetings on behalf of my grandparents, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Sister Clara Muhammad, and my parents, Emmanuel Ayman Mubarak and Rosie Muhammad. To Dr. Shakila, the Chicago History Museum and American Islamic College. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am overjoyed that the Fez will be on display in the museum so countless visitors will have the opportunity to learn more about my grandfather and how this iconic design became a symbol for his life's work, his faith, and a nation. I refer to him as grandfather throughout this, so please forgive me, but that's the way I know him, okay? I would like us to take a few minutes just to consider our past, our present, and our future. When I think about the past, my childhood and my 20s, my memories came to mind so many great things. My father, uh, stories of his youth, his recounting his first introduction to Master W.D. Farad Muhammad and learning about Al-Islam. 
the growth of the nation of Islam and serving time in prison with his father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and their deep conviction and unwavering faith during that time. I remember my father acknowledging Dr. Shakila and her beloved husband, Dr. Zia Hassan, and their relationship with my grandparents. No matter how many times we passed their home, he always pointed it out. I had the privilege of living um, at 4847 Woodlawn for a time, and even then, he pointed out the house every time we passed. <laughs> Being the youngest child, and I was deity as I called him, I was his little shadow. Wherever he was, there I was, and I wanted to be there all the time. I observed my parents and listened carefully, sometimes even when I wasn't supposed to, right? So little ears all the time. Being the youngest had its advantages, and although I didn't have that time that my, young, my older um, cousins had with my grandparents directly. Um, I got to know them very intimately from my father's accounts. I am eternally grateful for my father for spending that quality time with me in those deep conversations. You know, there's a saying that children learn what they live. And as you can see, the Muhammad family's generosity extends borders. Uh, my father was very generous. We have that in us. And so it doesn't, um, it doesn't surprise me when, Gra when Deity told the stories of grandfather bringing in Dr. Shaquilla and her husband and making them members of our family because that's what we've always done. If I could ask my cousins to raise their hand and how many people have lived in your home, how many people have we taken in personally, that's just what we do as Muhammad's. That's just what we do. So as we move to the present state, I want us to think about the transformation and growth of this community. The schools like Muhammad School in Atlanta where my cousin serves as the principal and director. The numerous books written by members of our community like the recent one written by my cousin Hafisa's husband, uh, Wali Baha, and others as we speak Family members, believers, and friends have gathered at the west corner of 127th Street and Malcolm X Avenue in Harlem, New York City to rename it the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Way. Wow. We have built on grandfather's message of justice, equality, freedom, Islam, and self-determination. We do for self, as he said, to do for self and think for self. I would never have imagined that I would work in Dubai. Whenever I'm in the UAE, I feel such pride and joy because I see homes built on the same architectural style as my grandparents' home here in Chicago. Many of you call it the palace. I observe Arabic and Islamic classes reminiscing on the days at Claire Muhammad School. When I rode a camel, the image of my grandfather on the camel in Egypt came to mind. He is always with me, and I know that he lives on in the hearts and minds of countless believers. Our future is what we make it. Today's commemoration of the transfer of the stewardship of the Fez and the symbol of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam to the Chicago Historical Museum, to Museum elevates the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's position in history for future generations to study. He was a Chicagoan, although born in Georgia. He was a longtime resident whose mark is evident in this city and around the world. I look forward to working collaboratively with Dr. Shakila, as many of my cousins do, to establish the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Sister Claire Muhammad Scholarship Fund right here at American Islamic College. <laughs> Inshallah, through grassroots, through grassroots efforts, we will see the scholarship fund come to fruition enabling young scholars around the world to attend college. 
I challenge us to remember and learn from the past, giving respect and honor to the pioneers so their place in history is not overlooked, to live in the present with intention and to prepare ourselves for the future. This community's history is rich. My family's history is rich. My grandfather, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and grandmother, Sister Clara Muhammad's life stories and impact on this world is rich. On grandfather's birth anniversary, we thank Allah for him. We thank Allah for Sister Dr. Shakila and her wonderful husband, Dr. Zia. I pray for him that he is looking upon us and looking upon me and this community with such pride. I end now asking that we think about this scholarship fund and what it can do, and that at some point you take time when we are prepared to roll it out to give generously. May Allah's blessings and mercy be with you always and with me as well, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Please allow me to, uh, to say, I always have something to say. <laughs> uh, what I learned, another story at uh, Minister, I mean, uh, at my brother Elijah Muhammad, okay, to make it sharp and proper. That, that's how I called him. One day I came up in an idea. I was baffled that how it was going on that he lived in a big home Every time it was full of people, and one son or the other, it was Emmanuel or Nathaniel or uh, 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 anybody, brother junior, etc., coming by, and they had a project assigned. How about lands, uh, you know, to grow vegetables? So whatever they called it, farming and lay, uh, you, you know, uh, healthy food. All those kind of things we talked about, and every family member was involved in some project. And I don't know what this crazy mind was thinking of in my coconut here, and it just asked me a question. I am supposed to work day and night at Northwestern University, get $50, and what did I buy? Nothing, I couldn't do anything. Anyway, I, I don't even know if I was that philosophy or wise or something. So I simply asked him, brother, I, um, I, can I ask you a question? How do you do all this? So I don't know whatever we asked. My brother, my husband is just looking at me, but not badly. And so he said uh, to me, don't, don't. She's asked, the, it's very good question. Let me tell you, and I'll just make it short. He tells long stories. That's how I got used to this. So, and, and he said, he said, uh, do you know, sister, that's a beautiful question, but all, the people in my uh, membership, in the Nation of Islam, each member gives me one dollar per week. You see? And I still, my mind is calculating how many, how many members you have, how many, you know. But I didn't say anything to him. I said, yeah, that makes sense. So he said, <laughs> I'm big, big approval of a wiser person who lives here to be 90 to uh, have benefited from all of this. It has such relevance to even citizenship in America, voting, grassroots. So all I am thinking is, I, uh, Jalila and I had talked, that if the nation of Islam, yeah, I mean, we don't want to broaden it that they have a burden to give million dollars somewhere, but bring it on if you have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and bring, the, so anyway, so this is what it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jalila. And of course, thank you, Dr. Shakila. I think I have multiple microphones happening at the same time. So it's a little more powerful than I'm used to. Uh, let's see. OK, so we're almost at the end of our program. And the, the, the last two speakers are actually mother and son. And so I'd like to invite you to come up together, Sister Halima and Brother Khalid. Again, Halima Muhammad Ali. Okay, let me just turn one of these off. So, can you hear me now? Okay, maybe not. 
So Halima Muhammad Ali is a lifelong family historian, author, educator, and teacher in the Muhammad schools in Atlanta. She is the author of In Her Spirit, a narrative biography on the life of Clara Muhammad. Her son Khalil, Khalil Ali, is an alumnus of the class of 2003 and a descendant of the Honorable Sister Clara Muhammad, pioneer in the development of Islamic education in America. He has dedicated his life and mission to be a guidepost for our scholars, and he has spent the last 13 years as a math teacher and now serves as the principal and director of the Muhammad schools in Atlanta. So Sister Halima and Brother Khalil, Yes, I, I had no idea I was going to be brought back up. I can be loquacious, but I have learned how to shut that down. So that's what I'm going to do. But I think I'm very grateful for being available to be a part of this service. Um, I want to say that one of the things that I meant to mention, and that's it for me, is that anything new that comes to the shores of North America is always challenged. Um, the Nation of Islam is a story that myself and others intend to bring the original and correct information to for the world to discover and to learn the truth of its beginnings. And that that is what is most important, that we know what brought this country together. Now, people didn't want to accept that the descendants of slaves would be the ones who bear the, the greater responsibility to make the voice of Islam, or al-Islam, a comfortable place in this country. So people didn't want to be bothered with us. When Dr. Shaquille and her husband came, that didn't exist in their spirit at all. And I told her, and I'm gonna say this, and this is all I'm gonna say. I told her on several occasions, I said, you know, Auntie, you don't know who you are. I said, don't you know that our brothers and sisters from overseas, they didn't feel that we were worthy, many of them, not, I can't say all, but many of them didn't feel we were worthy of being the ones to bring the voice of Islam into a part of the fabric of the United States of America. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, we were never good enough for anything. Uh, even 100 years up from slavery, we were still something to be looked down on. But she was chosen, she and her husband was, came here with unconditional love for humanity, period. And it is because of that that now we have this relationship. Look at us here. We didn't need to, to crowd the place, we're all leaders here. And when we go back, we're all commissioned to bring this family of love, of humanity. That's what Islam is about. One day I'll tell you that story too. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and family members, everybody here is family at this time. So please, can we give another round of applause for Dr. Shaquille Hassan? For her amazing contributions, and we are here today to honor her legacy. So I am deeply honored to stand before you today as the great grandson of Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Sister Clara Muhammad. As I reflect on my family's history, I'm filled with immense pride and profound sense of responsibility to carry forward their legacy. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's legacy, which is rooted in the struggles of his parents who were sharecroppers, it serves as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. His teachings, guided by the principles of Islam, self-reliance, education, and unity, have not only shaped the foundation of our family, but have also inspired countless others to strive for a better future. Growing up, I've been privileged to hear stories of unwavering determination and the sacrifices that they made for the betterment of our community. His legacy has been a guide in life for me. It's instilling a sense 
a, a deep sense of purpose and commitment to making a positive impact on the world, just as he did. So his emphasis on the strength of the family unit has resonated through generations. With love, support, and unity, we must advocate, excuse me, that, excuse me, the love, support, and unity that we advocate for have bound our family together, creating a strong and enduring bond that continues to inspire us. To get today, as his great-grandson, I carry the torch of their teachings with pride, and I'm committed to upholding our values of justice, equality, and compassion. I continue his legacy as the director and principal of Sister Clara Muhammad and Worthy Muhammad High School, which is together considered Muhammad Schools of Atlanta. I am dedicated to fostering understanding and unity among all people, just as they envision. So with respect to Dr. Shaquille Hassan and in the spirit of Sister Clara Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's legacy, let us come together as a community, embracing the principles of love, respect, and understanding. Through our collective efforts, we can honor their memory and continue the important work that they started, ensuring that their impact on the world will be felt for generations to come. So thank you, and with the greetings of peace, peace and blessings be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One thing that I've noticed as a, um, as a new friend of the family and as a brother is that the legacy of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Sister Clara and the entire family of Elijah Muhammad, the legacy is a legacy of transformation. And as, as our brother Imam Sultan spoke so eloquently and as Minister Farah Khan spoke so eloquently, the idea of of taking humanity with all of its trauma and all of its, all of its uh, denigration and ennobling that family or ennobling the human family and resuscitating and resurrecting the human family has been the project of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his entire family for all of this time. And that project has been instrumental, as I mentioned before, in the raising of this institution. It was, the, it was the shock wave of the life and legacy of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and, and it, it was the shock wave of that legacy that caught the attention of the people who originally put forward the money for the establishment of an Islamic college here in Chicago. And so without that shock wave, this college never would have come into existence. And so this college has now come full circle back to its original vision and mission. And that, Allahu Akbar. And that original vision is the promotion of education as an, as an instrument, as a vehicle for the transformation of the human family. As, as, and so we now are very proud to, to say and to declare to the world, and it's even now on our website, and it's, it's available for, ready for donations, but we are we're now very proud to unveil the Imam Warthuddin Muhammad Memorial Scholarship, which we announced last year at, the, at an event honoring his life and legacy. And that scholarship will go to students, who, students of promise who want to pursue you know, higher education in Islamic studies and really to, to specialize in the study of Islam and become scholars. And now we have this wonderful initiative that was, that was initially suggested by Dr. Shakila and backed very strongly by Dr. Jalila, that is to bring into being now also an Elijah and Clara Muhammad Memorial Scholarship, which, which will support students who want to pursue education in all of its forms as a, as a vehicle for social transformation and for human transformation. And so we are now very proud and honored to house those two scholarship initiatives that will be full tuition and fees for as long as it takes
for a student to earn their degree, get their credentials, and go out into the world and make a positive difference. So, so this, is a, this is a very exciting time for the college. I think it's a very exciting time for the family. I think it's a very exciting time for the city of Chicago and for the Chicago Historical Museum. And because of this great unity and because of this great power, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is one. And when we use the language of tawheed, tawheed is actually a verb in Arabic. It's a verbal, it's, it means the, the act of making unity. And so as Muslims who are the champions, are the upholders of tawheed, we should be the people who are promoting unity in the world. And you see the power, the unifying power of something as simple as this cap, right? How it has brought us together from so many cultures in so many different places, theological, ethnic, racial, socioeconomic, so many different places because of the sanctity and the spiritual power of one person who gave us a glimpse of what that concept of tawhid really means. It means to take humanity and all of its fragmentation and to restore us back to a place where we can just be one family again. And so it, it is our honor, it is my honor to be here. I'm so honored that the, that the Consul General of the, of the country of Pakistan has joined us. I'm so honored that all of you are here in all of your dignity and all of your luminosity and all of your unsung deeds to help and assist and uplift and ennoble the human family. It is such an honor to be here in your presence and such an honor to be in your presence, Dr. Shakila, and your family and all the generations. So I think we have four generations from both your family and also the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, four or five generations here today from the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Maybe five, mashallah. So we are, we are here as a multi-generational family that has come together and let us now walk together for the sake of the creation because God knows this creation is in need of all of the blessing, all of the mercy, all of the healing and all of the unity that we are celebrating today. So on, be, on behalf of the American Islamic College, on behalf of all of us, I just want to thank all of you, thank Dr. Shakila, and give thanks to the legacy of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that has given us such a beautiful occasion to gather, and to renew our faith, renew our commitment, and to go forth into the world as agents of change. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, one, one final thing, forgive me. One final thing is that the photographers would like us all to gather in the middle for a group picture, for a family photo, inshallah. And, and uh, oh, and the, also, forgive me, I'm too, uh, too caught up in the spirit of the moment. Before we gather, I think it would, it's appropriate for us all now to stand as the fez of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is taken out of this room and taken to its new home at the Chicago Historical Museum. And Dr. Peter will now take it from the stage, inshallah. And we will stand in honor, in, in respect, as it leaves this room and goes to its new home. And then we'll all gather in the middle for a family photo, inshallah. Okay, so now it's time for a family photo and then food and bean pie, thanks to Sister Sophia. Okay, Assalamu Alaikum. Here she goes. 